Hi, and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name's Chris, and it's fantastic to have you back with us for another podcast video. And in today's video, we are delighted to be joined by Marcello, the CEO of Singularity DAO. It's going to be a fantastic interview, and we'll pose all the questions that we've collated from the community. And um, yeah, look, really excited about this one. If you enjoy this sort of content, mash up the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, tapping that bell, selecting all the notifications so you never miss a crypto update right let's get down and chat with marcello so uh welcome marcello great to have you back on the channel again uh, it seems like it's been it's been some time but uh, i've been really looking forward to this one and, and so is the community for those that uh don't know who you are would you mind just sort of uh just doing a bit of a short intro into to who you are and and, and what the singularity dow project is Hi, Chris. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be on your channel. channel. Thank you for, for having me. So my name is uh, Marcello Mari. Um, I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Singularity DAO. Uh, previously, I was at Singularity Net for, for a few years. I was part of the funding team. And then in, uh, in, May, in, in uh, towards the end of 2020, I started to work on the Singularity DAO idea and uh, that I basically developed until this point together with uh, with the Singularity DAO team. Awesome. So, Marcello, I'm absolutely thrilled to be talking with you. Um, big supporter of the project. I absolutely love Singularity DAO and our community know all about that. I talk about it regularly. So, you know, over the, over the, the past while here, we've seen a lot of moves in the artificial, artificial intelligence, you know, on the charts. So can you maybe explain to us a little bit, you know, where this has came from? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that that's, that has been very interesting to uh, to witness, to be honest. So, um, you know, we've been working on artificial intelligence through Singularity Net for for quite some time, and uh, since since twenty seventeen, as I was saying. However, you know, AI has been in development for for many decades for many decades right now. So, um, it's been you know a buzzword floating around in the tech industry. Um, used at the narrow uh, level in in uh, in many fields. Um, however, for the first time with the release of Chat GPT, uh, um, anybody had the opportunity to actually interact with artificial intelligence and hold, almost have a sense to talk with with a sentient with a sentient uh, being. Right. So um, let's let's start with with saying that you know. Artificial intelligence is still far from being sentient. Um, uh, Chat GPT, it's an extremely cool uh, language model, large language model, uh, but it's still far from, from being AGI, artificial general intelligence. So I think um, the release of Chat GPT has kicked off a lot of buzz around artificial intelligence, um, a lot of news and a lot of interest. That have basically bring AI back to the uh, the media narrative, which is which is fantastic for us. You know, is 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 no news. I mean, we we knew what everybody else is working on. Um, you know, Deep Mind has made amazing progresses uh, in the past with AlphaGo and Google uh, has already released their um, their competitive their competitive model uh, Bard and uh, and Sparrow from from Deep Mind. So a um, lot going on. A uh, lot, lot uh, has been released. A lot to to, to release, um, uh, and uh, and it's very exciting to see how this is picking up at the media level. Yeah, I think it's it's been breathtaking to 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 see the narrative and and how that's kind of spiraled to where we are today. I think um, it's been fantastic for people to be able to actually get their hands on it, and uh, a lot of people are hearing about it for the first time. So Nick and myself were like rubbing our hands together. We we're like, oh, people finally have had a, a chance to see what's actually going on. Um, but for those that perhaps aren't as clued up on uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, crypto, and, and that side of things, and uh, really just dipping their toes in, what, you know, I guess in, in, in a short abbreviated version, is artificial intelligence and machine learning? Yeah, Tough well, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, so AI, it's a term that encompasses different uh, techniques, including uh, machine learning, reinforcement learning, um, unsupervised learning, deep learning, and, uh, and, and so on. So um, in, in, uh, you know, in a general sense, we, we, we call AI a set of algorithms that it's able to learn by, by itself. 
in an unsupervised or supervised way. So um, anything that uses um, algorithms to analyze complex and large database of data and learn by itself can be described as artificial intelligence. Um, I think the um, uh, the word artificial intelligence, the term artificial intelligence doesn't give too much justice to, uh, uh, to, to the technology itself uh, because immediately the average person expected to be uh, to be intelligent like a human brain um, you know there will be a day in which we're gonna have the one that we call the AGI again so artificial general intelligence so an, uh, an artificial intelligence able to think like like a human brain uh, or similar in a similar way to uh, to a human brain however um, there will always be you know basic differences between uh, human brains and, uh, and AI something that AI is extremely good at is analyzing very large and complex data sets faster than the human brain. Something that a human brain will always and probably always be better at is to understand and find patterns um, uh, in, 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 in this data and the ability of analyzing and understanding the context. So um, AI you know, can, uh, can be used in a variety of different industries. And I think the release of ChatGPT is going to introduce many more use cases in which AI can be used. And I'm extremely excited to see uh, the development and the new startup that are coming out from, uh, from, this, um, from this release and the new competition that will come up um, and, uh, and how this will also be applied in, uh, in, in the blockchain space and crypto space. Excellent. So whilst we are on the topic of AI, can I ask your thoughts, your opinions on open AI? Yeah, sure. So um so open AI, I was actually watching um a long interview by Sam Altman, which is the founder of Open AI, just just last night. Um and uh, I think they, you know, their, their work has been has been incredible. They've done a very good job. Uh, ChatGPT is, you know, it came earlier than than we expected, and uh, as I said, it's definitely going to revolutionize many fields. Uh, it's going to, you know, to uh, to make some job obsolete. It's going to require um, a, a, a refocus of skills from uh, from 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 us, from uh, from people. Um, just, uh, I was, I was talking to, um, to a teacher when I was in, in, in Riyadh, um, actually uh, the husband of a teacher. And he was telling me that his wife, uh, recently found out that one of the students was cheating and was producing essays using chat GPT, which obviously it's, it, it's not a surprise, right? If, if, if we had chat GPT, we would have used it extensively clearly. Um, uh, and and probably out of one that was caught, there were other tens that didn't get caught, right? So I'm assuming that you know a large portion of students are now using ChatGPT, but that obviously means that in the in the short to medium term, we will have to refocus our skills in a different way. Probably like producing um, long text is not going to be um, a basic required skills uh, to to join the workforce. Um, probably there will be different kind of skills required but that's what just one of the you know ethical and philosophical um question that the rise of this large language model pose um however let me also say that um open ai you know there was the started as, as as a startup um i mean although although backed by some very large vcs in in the silicon valley uh and by some big personalities like sam altman and elon musk um has obviously as you know receive very large investments from from microsoft then you know it's a it's a recent announcement that microsoft will also integrate the same technology into their um into their um, uh, search engine bing into the browser edge um so these players open ai deep mind they all come from a highly centralized background so microsoft and google right so um, I think the reason why project like Singularity Net, Singularity DAO, NuNet, and many other AI and blockchain projects are getting so much traction recently and so much attention, it's also because users are starting to ask themselves, what's going to happen to our data? Who are we helping with our queries? What kind of, you know, 
which models are we training and how are they gonna use are gonna be used in the future? So these are very important questions that anybody should be asking themselves. And I think the answer, a potential and possible answer, or our answer, it's in the convergence between blockchain and, and artificial intelligence. So I expect with, with the growth of, of this project and with the attention that they're getting, I also expect more growth and more attention towards projects that are actually using blockchain uh, to decentralize and democratize access to these tools um, and, uh, and, uh, and to more and innovative governance models that projects like us are working on in order to, um, to control the development of artificial intelligence. Yeah, I think yeah, you know, you you raise some some very valid points there. Does um AI AI, if I get my words out, uh raise any, you know, concerns at any point for for you? Is there anything that, you know, stands out as 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 a big concern? You, you know, I think you you mentioned um, you know, people perhaps having to change their job roles and and stuff like that, but is there anything else? Um yeah, I mean, some of this some of the 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 skills that people and I mean humans have been focusing on for the for the for the past uh, uh during the during our evolution are probably going to become obsolete um and uh, but however i mean there are way better um uh, scenarios that i can envision for the development of artificial intelligence rather than the uh, the worst case scenario so um, i mean in a spectrum where you know art artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence will one day work uh for for humans and will make you know uh will make money for humans and we will have enough capital to redistribute equally among uh everybody in the world that's the best scenario right so we're yeah. going to be able to give everybody uh ubi produced by artificial intelligence that's the best case scenario on the other side of the spectrum we have an artificial intelligence to become sentient and become so powerful uh to be able to exponentially outperform the uh, um uh, the the human brain and will eventually understand that the human race can be a, a, an existential risk to artificial intelligence therefore we're engaged into a war against artificial intelligence well between these two spectrums i I strongly believe that we are far more towards the best case scenario, although it's, you know, it's got probably going to be in between, but I don't see any reason why the um, next artificial general intelligence will encompass the same uh, bias that humans have. So humans are capable of hate, humans are capable of greed, humans are capable of the worst feelings. Artificial intelligence is not artificial intelligence doesn't necessarily need to see its creators as an enemy and is way more likely to work alongside humans to make the world a better place for humans couldn't, couldn't agree more with you there I, I, I personally cannot wait to see agi become what it can become you know i think we're just at the beginning there so before we kind of break into singularity dow as a project one last thing i'd like to ask you and it's what kind of value do you feel the artificial intelligence brings to the crypto space? Well, um, that's, uh, that's, that's many ways that AI can be used in, uh, in, uh, in the crypto space. And, uh, and there's many more that will come up in the next, uh, in, during the next year. Again, thanks to the release of this new, uh, new technologies. Um, you know, w one example is that in in uh, in on on the blockchain, every every transaction is public; it's visible, right? But it's currently displayed in a, an extremely messy way, uh, very hard to understand um, and very hard to 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 analyze. So, if we take all of these gigabytes of data that are produced daily uh, on the blockchain, and we're able to add the machine learning. Um, uh, analytics on top of it then we're going to see things that we were that we were not able to see previously therefore uh we're going to be able to understand better how capital flows uh across different ecosystems across different wallets we're going to be able to perform a better decision based on based on these analytics um we're going to be able to see patterns that we were not able to see before so this is just one of 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 the use cases that 
you know, analysts and traders are going to be able to use. Um, from um, from from a, a user perspective, these trading decisions will eventually trickle down to the users, um, uh, opening up new opportunities to um, uh, to um, to profit, new opportunities to profit from. Uh, uh from different protocols on uh, on chain uh we're also going to be able to understand better how uh how price moves across uh different uh different currencies make better predictions uh we're gonna we're gonna be able to understand how sentiment social sentiment the media sentiment actually influence the movement of prices in uh in in crypto i mean not just in bitcoin and ethereum but also on uh, on on other uh altcoins for example um by looking at on-chain data we would have been able to uh, to spot the ftx crash happening as it was happening right because you're able to see how moon how money were moving out of the exchange in real time so because we didn't have these technologies uh we failed to see it on time and for many other reasons of course um but that's a great improvement that ai can bring to the uh to the crypto space for example awesome um so i guess just focusing on singularity dow um moving forward how are you planning on you know keeping the first mover advantage because obviously you mentioned there's going to be uh new companies popping up you know perhaps some some copycat companies uh what what's the 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 plan for for that um aspect of things from from a singularity dow point of view yeah so um so first of all we are very close to release uh a lot of innovative products uh but both at a protocol level and uh at an artificial intelligence level so we've been working on this for about um for about a year now and um and uh and we have talents uh and exposure to to innovation that you know uh, it's it's difficult to find as well in uh, in the crypto space so um i believe we're going to be the first to release the uh, the first artificial intelligence managed portfolio uh i believe we are the first one that are going to be able to release um um fairly accurate price predictions and um and uh and the first one in, that you, you know they're going to do so in the decentralized finance space so directly involving the community in the decision making and uh, and and, uh, and especially in a non-custodial way so um i don't necessarily fear competition i always embrace competition because i think that together we grow so if there is new innovation that other protocols are bringing that we haven't thought that we haven't um taken in consideration yet that would you know present opportunities to partner to work together and to create something better uh together couldn't agree more i think competition is healthy in this space i personally do believe that you know singularity Dow will be the market leader going forward so but anyway we can move on here and segue into going forward do you have um any idea of when the roadmap will be released for 2023 so um we gathered together uh a couple of weeks ago in uh, in athens with 15 of the core senior members of uh of singularity dao um to work exactly on on the roadmap and uh we have it very clear when it comes to the uh, protocol innovations and the defined innovations um we're still working on a concrete timeline when it comes to the uh, ai product releases so as soon as we have some more um you know set uh, set dates uh we're going to be able to release the uh, the new roadmap so um i think the community should be able to expect it within the first quarter of this year or beginning of the next quarter awesome and um do you have any uh, info on the the latest uh, Dynaset run performance compared to the previous run? Yeah, yeah. So um, I know the community has been concerned about the uh, performances of 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 Dynasets. So the the current 
trading window is not not doing necessarily bad. I mean, we are still um, pretty much around the uh, the benchmark, um, just a little bit up above when it comes to the uh, traditional Dyna set, and uh, and a little just a little bit below when it comes to the uh, new experimental Dyna sets. Um, so you know, we we always need to remember that we are a company that you know it's two years old. Uh, but I mean, uh, like in uh, we, we released the first uh, uh, iteration of our product just a year ago. So in one year, I think we achieved a lot of a lot of very remarkable results. And uh, and and you know we're still testing, we're still learning, we're still improving. So currently, we you know our, our traders are taking a, a conservative approach. Uh, we are developing more tools for them to use and to uh, support the decision making, obviously with artificial intelligence. And uh, soon enough, we're going to be able, as I said, to release the first uh, um, AI or automated traded uh, Dyna set. So um, I'm very bullish on 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 Dyna set as a product, as a, as a, as a tool. Um, I'm very aware of the innovations that we're bringing to the market. I'm very aware of the difficulties that. That we are facing and we're aware of you know the um, irrationality of the market that we that we operate which makes obviously extremely difficult to make uh, to make the good decision especially when uh, when you're managing other people's capital and especially when you're doing so in a in a transparent way on chain as we do so um it's a it's a process it's a process that has a clear path uh of of improvement we have uh, ideas on how to improve and I hope that the community will uh, will stick around with us because um, you know the, the future looks very bright. Yeah I don't think I have an issue there the, the community is very bullish on singularity now in the Dyna sets I think the previous performance you've also had you know that's it's kind of why I'm so bullish on it the performance you had on the BTC Dyna set for instance is phenomenal so yeah I, I do think good things going forward. So a question we did have here from the community, I would like to obviously bring forward the AI that Singularity DAO uses. Do Singularity DAO own this AI? Um, yeah, so we have the IP on the uh, uh, research that uh, that we are doing. So um, we have an AI R&D department, uh, which is made of uh, three senior engineers uh, one of them is uh, Dr. Anton Kolonin, who is, you know, a legend in uh, in in the space. And uh, and yes, yeah, so we 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 own the uh, the IP of every AI product that uh, that we are creating. Um, some of these uh, AI product will be used uh, directly on on Dynasets. Other will be used to support the decision making of of the traders. Um, others will be packaged and served to uh, to enterprises. So definitely, yes, we do own uh, all the AI that has been developed by us. Yes, I, I guess another question that the the community has got is um, is the AI program used by Singularity DAO supervised or unsupervised learning? It's 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 a mix. So some 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 of what we're using is supervised. The other is uh, is unsupervised. Um, so we're using some uh, transformer package to transform complex set of data into uh, trading indicators, for example, and that is supervised. And then we are using um, we, we we are using price prediction uh, techniques. Um, and and that is unsupervised because it's natural learning from uh, from market movements. So it's um, you know we 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 have both. Um, I think it's also like uh, uh, talking about the um, you know whether we own the artificial intelligence that we develop. Um, all the artificial intelligence that is developed uh, uh, by the the Singularity DAO Tech Lab is owned by 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 us there will be a distinction moving forward that we're going to announce soon between uh the dao who manages the uh, the protocol and the tech company who's actually developing and sponsoring the protocol and developing the technology that you know will be used on the protocol so cool so i think that leads in quite well to this next question which you know hasn't been planned here so the uh, the data sets that that are being analyzed 
um, in Singularity DAO, what kind of volume of data sets are, you, are, are being looked at? Um, I mean, I have, I have not, I don't have that in top of my mind, but we're talking about uh, terabytes and terabytes, right? So uh, it, it depends on the specific, uh, on the specific, on the specific case. So as I said, we're you know we're analyzing social social data, we're analyzing uh, order flow data, we're analyzing analyzing on chain data. So you know all, all together they make a huge amount of data in the order of several terabytes. Yeah, I could imagine it would just be a monster set of data, wouldn't it? Um, what's the, the rate of accuracy for, for the algorithm uh, is one of the, the questions that we had in from the community. Yeah, that also really depends. Um, again, so um, it, 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 it really depends. So when, when it comes so we are in a research phase, right? So when it comes to uh, uh, to social sentiment, uh, we achieved a, a very good degree of of accuracy. Uh, it's very 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 close um, to, uh, to to be released and to be announced. Um, when it comes to price prediction, it really depends on market conditions. In some market conditions, we perform really well. In other market conditions, a bit less. Um, and again, hopefully, we're gonna be able to. Uh, to release more details um, at, at some point this year. Um, when it comes to our algo trading, again, it really depends on uh, on the strategy that is picked, on the time frame, and uh, and so on. So, um, th you know, things generally are are, are looking good, but um, but we're still in research phase under many aspects. So another, well, the last one I I have here from the community is questions. Um, it's around the epoch vaults you have, and they're asking, are you looking to expand the epoch vaults, uh, vaults, sorry, um, on the BNB chain to encompass higher time frames? Yeah, look. Um, so one one major improvement that uh, that we've been working on over the past year is the release of the one that we call the Protocol V two, right? So the Protocol V two will bring a lot of innovations, um, including the ability for the community to decide uh, the time that they would want to lock in their token into the staking into the staking vaults. So the longer they uh, they lock, uh, and that can go from uh, from from few weeks to up to several years. Um, the long they, the longer they lock, the more rewards they will get, and there will be uh, different kind of rewards that will be redistributed to the uh, to the community, similar to what um, Curve does, for example. Yeah, that sounds sounds really interesting. I think it segues nicely into the next uh, community led question, which is: uh, Are you looking to add any options to potential incentives for long term holders of Estal besides just the the staking aspect that we've got currently? Yeah, for sure. So again, I mean, this is all part of the uh, Protocol V2 um, release that, the, that, that, that we are working on. Um, and uh, so SRAP, which is the Singularity Reputation Token, which is a credit score that will be assigned to the community based on certain actions that they take within the protocol, is one of these uh, new, new, new incentives. Um, we will, you know, redistribute the... Uh, performance fees of the Dynaset back to the DAO and uh, whomever will hold the tokens for the longest uh, will be able to receive more of more of uh, this these rewards so definitely we you know there will be more and more incentives for the community to to lock in their token and to support the protocol by doing so so this is something that we're actively looking uh, looking at and uh, and they will be announcing very soon in more details and discuss with the community in uh, on our forum. Super. And uh, one final question, I guess, before we look to to wrap things up, is um, you know, is there anything else that you you wish to to cover? Any um, I guess reveals or uh, any uh, nuggets of uh, stuff that you can share with us that you haven't already. Yeah, well, so pr Protocol V2 is definitely what I'm most um, uh, most excited about um, because it will bring will bring in the the ability for 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 our user to join and exit Dynasets at any time. We, so we're not gonna have 
set um, contribution windows anymore. So the way that it works now, we used to have a couple of weeks or a week where a user can deposit their funds. Initially, they were locked in for the trading window, and then they will be able to uh, withdraw or redeem. Then we introduced a new innovation, whereas we still had the contribution window, but users are now able to redeem their LP tokens at any time and to sell it back to the protocol. What will happen with the new release of Protocol V2 is that we are going to get rid of deposit windows at all. So there will be a continuous trading. Users will be able to join and exit at any point in time, which, is, which I think it's a great innovation. It was definitely a hurdle for new users to join uh, Singularity DAO before. So that I'm, 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 I'm very excited about. I'm very excited about the new governance proposals that, uh, that we're working on, the, uh, the DAO structure. Um, ZREP and the incentive that will come with it, um, the ability for the community to vote uh, on incentive of different staking pools. Um, I'm very excited about the uh, the new launches that are coming in uh, to the uh, Singularity DAO launchpad, which you know we've set aside for quite some time. The market wasn't that good, so but now it's finally picking up again. So it's now time to uh, to involve our community into the Singularity Net ecosystem again. And um, and uh, you know, as you know, there are many rumors in the community, but I can safely confirm that we're going to be able to launch uh, Rejuve pretty soon through uh, through our to our launchpad and uh, and hopefully Hypercycle as well uh, following the launch of of Rejuve. So um, these I'm extremely excited about. Uh, the community can start already locking their tokens to be able to access the um, the, uh, the token generation event on the Singularity DAO launchpad. And uh, it's also very exciting because it proves once again uh, the, the, the central role that Singularity DAO plays into the Singularity Net ecosystem as a key spin-off agent, as the, you know, the centralized bank of, of, uh, of Singularity Net, the decentralized investment arm, and an and asset manager of Singularity Net ecosystem. So, um, you know, from, from a community perspective, I think this is extremely important. Um, and then uh, obviously the release of, of our new AI driven products, uh, including, you know, once again, sentiment analysis, trans transformer packages, uh, price prediction, on-chain data analytics and so on. Um, down the line, something that I'm also like very excited about, and, and I understand that I use the word excited a lot, but you know, that comes with the limitation of my vocabulary, um, is the fact that with the decentralization of the Singularity DAO protocol, we're going to welcome um, traders and, and trading community to join Singularity DAO, meaning that new strategists will be able to come in, create the strategies, uh, and uh, and somebody else or themselves can execute the strategy or manage the strategies. And uh, and the performance fees made by these strategies will be then redistributed to the DAO. So we will create a virtuous mechanic that will benefit the, uh, the, the whole DAO. The protocol will increase TVL, will bring more attention, will bring more decentralization, and will put us in a, in, a, in, a, in a very good place to achieve the success that we envision for Singularity DAO since the beginning. Yeah, some, some really exciting uh, stuff that you guys are, have got going on. Really excited about HyperCycle and Rejuve, two great projects. Um, can we just touch on, you said locking up the, the, the tokens to participate in, in the sales. Um, how much do they have to to lock up, and do you know the the details for for that? So there are yeah there are different tiers. Um, so depending on how many tokens you will lock, you'll be able to access uh, different tier of allocation. So this tier goes from one thousand uh, stars for the lower one, two thousand five hundred the second one, five thousand for the third one. 10,000 for the fourth one, and 20,000 is the uh, the top tier. So each of these tier will have a guaranteed uh, token allocation. So the way that it goes is that you will have guaranteed token allocation for each tier. So 90% will, will be allocated in this way. 10% will be uh, on a first come first serve base. The tokens that are not going to be claimed by, by the, the previous tiers will then be again offered uh, as as a first come first serve based, um, there will be two different pools. 
one for AGIX holders and one for uh, SDAO holders, so that we give access to both the SDAO community and the AGIX community, so both they will be able to lock their token as 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 they please um, and and access this uh, these tiers. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically how it's going to work. Super. I think the last one was it NuNet, the last one that you guys yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, sold out super quick, right? That was very quick. Yes. So yeah. and and that was you know probably larger than uh, than the one that we're doing now. So um, I'm not gonna say anything, but uh, but I think you know the community should start you know putting their fingers on the trigger and be ready. Definitely. Yeah, so I, I think we've seen a lot of a lot of good signs coming off the back of the likes of Hypercycle and Rejuve. So yeah, I think all the faith is there with everything that's going on. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, there, there is definitely a lot of momentum because of the uh, AI narrative, but we also need to consider that, you know, Rejuve has been on the making for two to three years now. So, uh, you know, they, um, they, uh, they're they bringing a lot of innovations. They've been working very hard. They have an extremely talented team, uh, very capable um, from bo both a, a technical standpoint and scientific standpoint. Uh, obviously, they have the backing of the Singularity Net Foundation and all the talents. Hypercycle um, has been, you know, conceptualized by Tufi uh, Saliba, who is the mastermind behind the Toda to Protocol, together with his partner Daniel, uh, but also with the support of of Ben, the Singularity Net team, their advisory team. So Hypercycle is an extremely complex and brainy project that you know, is going to be able to deliver something that is going to be crucial for the uh, development of artificial intelligence. So being able to connect um, several different uh, computing power providers, large computing power providers around the world to be able to serve AI development, I think it's it's a crucial step if you really want to achieve uh, AGI in the future. And Hypercycle is definitely going into that direction. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a layer two sidechain for Cardano, Ledgerless uh, as well. So definitely go do your reading is uh, my recommendation on both of those projects for sure. Um, but yeah, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule uh, today, Marcello. It's been fantastic to have you on the, the channel as always. Uh, and I look forward to the next time. Thank you very much, Grace. Thank you, JB. It's, what, it's always a pleasure talking to you. No, no, thank you for coming on the channel. We do look forward to having you on again at some point. You know, we'll maybe not leave it so long next time, but yeah, just <laughs> thank you very much for coming on. Very appreciated. Thank you. So that was Marcello from Singularity Dow. Fantastic that he took the time out of his busy schedule to spend it with us, talking through everything Singularity and artificial intelligence and machine learning and all that narrative that sort of came out of nowhere, really. Um, so, yeah, it's fantastic to have him on the channel. If you enjoyed the the podcast, then we would really appreciate if you mash up that like button, show your appreciation. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Tap in that bell, selecting all the notifications so you never miss a video. And you know what? We'll catch you in the next one. Take care.